I'm gonna show you how I animated this tree of life, which is inspired by these vintage botanical illustrations, which I love so much. And you do not need to be a good illustrator to do this because we're gonna use free stock images and then apply a painted filter over top using movie magic. All right, so let's get into it. So I am super inspired by these vintage botanical illustrations. I even have one hanging above my toilet. And I really wanted to try animating one. The only problem is that these are done with like watercolor or, or painted. And I don't know about you, but I can't paint. So I thought that maybe what I could do is I could try um, using photography, real photography, and then uh, apply some kind of painted effect on top. So that's what we're gonna do. So I found a bunch of images that I like on Unsplash, which are free to use for personal and commercial use. And the trick here is that we want images that are gonna be easy to cut out, something like this. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring them into Photoshop and we can use the really nice remove background action, which you can just find on your uh, quick actions here, remove background. And that does a really good job of removing the background like this. And then you might have to go in here and just keep uh, cleaning stuff up like that, boom. I also used Illustrator to create some vector elements here like this tree branches and stuff, things that I couldn't find good images for. And I just used some of the default brushes in here to get some of these nice textures. You can see there are some cool texture brushes default in Illustrator. And all I did was I just layered this a few times with a light color, a dark color, and the medium color. And I imported this into After Effects as grayscale. The reason I did grayscale was that if I want to apply color later to do some kind of global color correction, it's going to be a lot easier if this is in grayscale to make it whatever color I want later. So now I'm going to just generally start to lay things out and just block out a rough timing so I have something to work with. So I put in the general structure of this tree and like I make a really rough loop out of it and then I'll start importing some files and start laying out the scene. So I'll just start putting in like some vines and some leaves to just kind of um, try to make a nice composition to look at here. And I use some tools to help me with importing stuff like Overlord for Illustrator and Time Lord for Photoshop. So I can just really easily push uh, layers over like this. Um, and this just helps me save a lot of time so I don't have to save and import every file. If you wanna check this stuff out, I got links and discount codes in the description. And so when I'm working with a lot of repeated elements like this, it's generally a good idea to pre-comp things with pre-compositions. So for example, let's say I have this leaf that gets repeated a bunch of times, I'll make a pre-comp of it. And this way, if I want to change the color, I can just add on these color effects. So in this case, I'm adding a CC toner with this color palette. Or if I have this Monstera leaf, I can add this effect on top. So in this case, I'm tinting it black and white and then adding that same color palette on top. And we go back to our main composition. Now we are able to add these kind of global changes that happen everywhere because all of these compositions are linked together. So they're, they're all happening at the same time. And I know what you're thinking. Monstera leaves, they don't like direct sunlight like this, but this is a fictional project, so I can I can do whatever I want, okay? That's why I got all these different fruits together. So now I'm gonna add a bunch of animated details throughout all this, like some fruit bouncing off some branches, some butterflies flapping around, and some leaves blowing in the wind. Then I wanna to try to create a loop point. And the way that I try to create a loop point is I basically copy this first frame and I can take a little picture of it by clicking this take snapshot button and then go to where my where the ending is or I want the loop to be. And we're gonna to try to match this up as close as possible. Basically by copying everything on this first frame and duplicating it and then dragging it down to this ending point and just trying to match things up 
as close as possible. Now, in this case, in my case, there's a lot of expressions where things are wiggling around. So you can see that things are not gonna match up no matter how much I want them to be. It's just not gonna be as close as I'd like it to be. It's never gonna be perfect no matter how much I try. And that's just life and it's okay. So we're gonna do the next best thing behind having a perfect loop. We're just gonna add a little glitch on top and hide the loop point and make it feel seamless, okay? So here's the thing about adding a glitch to hide your bad loop. I find that you generally don't wanna just make the glitch come out of nowhere because it feels a little cheap. So what I did here was I added these little scan lines that kind of roll down the, uh, the whole image uh, leading up to the glitch. So if you can see here, I just have these lines that roll down like this. If I isolate here, you can see them. These are just, just lines that roll down the screen. Um, they're invisible, but that's what they look like. And I'm using a displacement map then to displace the video beneath it. And these just kind of roll down, teasing that there is this displacement or this glitch that's happening before the big glitch that happens at the end, which then hides the loop. And I think when you do things like that, when you tease a little bit, uh, it helps sell the effect more. And then for the overall texturing and the painted effect, it's gonna look something like this. So at the base level, you know, we tinted all of our leaves and our fruit and everything. We gave them all a global tint and try tone them or whatever you did for the color to try to bring them all in the same kind of color palette to bring them in the same kind of world same kind of hues and stuff and then so that helps and then i will add something like a gradient on top with a a blending mode of your liking um, and that will kind of dull everything down that's optional obviously but i like the way that looks some curves here and i'll play with um, the different channels to just kind of crunch stuff in various ways here and then i added on this painted effect with an adjustment layer which comprises of a few things and i will link to a more in-depth tutorial if you want to really get into this but Generally, what this looks like is a vector blur, which is going to kind of swirl around your pixels like this with the vector blur, then a dust and scratches, which is gonna blur it up again. This kind of really makes it look like paint here. And then an unsharp mask, which will kind of sharpen things up and bring out the detail a bit more. And then some color correction on top. Then I'm gonna take this one step farther and add on some more textures, which is gonna comprise mostly of this halftone, um, M's halftone plugin, which you can grab from AU Scripts. You don't need to use this plugin. I just find it easy, but you can really use any kind of method for halftoning. Um, use any kind of tutorial, which I think the half toning really makes it feel like that kind of dot screen or um, handmade printed effect. And then some chromatic aberration on top, which separates these RG and B pixels, which also kind of feels like it is printed. So then it's really just about all the little details that tie it all together. I added this this paper texture wobbly border, added some, some speckled texture on top, and played with the colors a lot, and then really just fine-tuned all the animated details that I thought really brought it to life. So that's really it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any more questions about this process, uh, leave them in the comments below and let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.